Hello, it's Shari here, and today I'm going to be making this fall thanks card featuring some colored pencil coloring on that cute little basket of apples from Thanks a Bushel. So first thing I'm going to do is stamp out my images here, and I've got this basket of apples, and I'm going to be stamping it with the black licorice lawn fawn ink because I'm going to be doing colored pencil coloring, so I don't have to worry about my ink smearing. And then I'm also going to stamp out the single apple here, and I'm going to add a little, I like the smiley face with the little hearts for eyes, so I'm adding that to one of those. And I've already went ahead and picked out my colors here based on some apples that I had colored before. I'm going to be making some green apples, some red apples, and some yellow apples. And I use Prismacolor colored pencils, and I'm just going to be blending them just with the pencils. I'm not using anything extra. And the key to this is to just build up the color from the lightest to the darkest, start light, and then go from there. I'm going to speed things up just so you can see all my coloring and I don't leave anything out. So you can see I started with the lightest green, kind of where my highlight would be. Now I'm going in with the mid-tone green and I've gone back with the lighter and I can kind of blend where those two overlap. And then I can go in with the darkest one at the bottom and where my shadows will be. And it's just like Copic coloring in a way where you kind of just work you go from the darkest to the next one and blend out the dark one. And then you go with the lightest and blend that one out. So it works in the same respect, except for the fact that you really need to just start light and build up color with pencils. It's hard to take color away with a pencil. There's no magical blender pen like there is with Copics to kind of remove color. There is an eraser, but that's not always the same. So that's the key and my tip is to just start light and build up from there. Give more pressure the more pigment you want, but don't start that way. So I'm just going in and blending with the lighter one with the yellow here, and I'm gonna do the same on the red, just like I did with the green and the yellow. Start with the lightest at the top, then my mid-tone. And I'll blend it out with the lighter again, just to kinda of Soften the line between the two colors, and then I'll go in with my darkest and add some shadow. I've got a couple more greens, and these are different greens than I used in my green apple, just so that the leaves didn't look the same as the apple. So these are a little darker and a little brighter. Now to color my basket, I'm going to use kind of two different shades of brown. I don't want it to all look the same. So I'm using some lighter ones with a little bit of a red tone for those vertical pieces. And I just went in with the lighter. Now I'm going in with the darker that has a little more red in it. And I'm just putting that dark shadow kind of under where those horizontal bands would be. Now I can go in with my other browns here. They're a little darker and don't have as much red in them. And I'm going to just color those horizontal bands on the basket. So I'm starting with the lighter one and then I'm going to pull the shadow of the darker ones in from the outside, leaving the lighter highlight kind of in the middle of that rounded part of the basket. Now I need to color my little single apple here and I'm going to do the yellow for him. Just like I did on the apples in the basket. And then I wanted to add a little bit of rosy cheeks, so I'm going to find my blush pink pencil here and just add very subtle rosy cheeks. It's kind of hard to see, but you can see them in real life. Now I'm going to use the matching dies, the coordinating dies, and cut out my basket of apples and my little smiling apple here. So I just hold those in place with some post-it note tape once I have them lined up. And then I can just run it through my cuddle bug. So now that I've got those cut out, I'm just going to set them aside and I'm going to start assembling my card. I have a piece of very wide burlap ribbon here. It actually has a wired edge to it. And I'm going to 
put this on this wood grain card here. This is the four bar card in the walnut from Juan Fon. And I'm just gonna add this to it to kind of create a stripe down the center and add some texture to this card. Mm. So I'm gonna be using some double stick tape. And I have this lined up on my grid mat here. You can see that ribbon is about two inches wide. So I can see where I need to put my double stick tape just to go on the edges of the ribbon. That's where I'm gonna start. So I wanna make sure that that burlap is held down on the edges. And I'm cutting it a little long and I'm just gonna trim off the tails of that adhesive tape once I'm done here. So I'm gonna do both sides. And I can see there that it's gonna get both edges of my ribbon. So I've added a couple more pieces down the center just so it gets held into place really well. And then I'm gonna trim off the excess here. This is a good way to make sure that it goes the full length of your card and there's no edges that are gonna be hanging out there with no adhesive. Now I've pulled off the backing and I'm ready to put my burlap ribbon down. So I'm gonna line it up with my grid mat here just so I can make sure things are straight. And this card actually didn't wanna stay closed, so you're gonna see here that I'm gonna actually adjust that here in a minute. But I'm gonna make sure that this holds it down and holds it straight. So it was a lot easier to keep it flat if I opened it. I put my scissors up there just to kind of hold it down a little bit. And of course this goes past the top and the bottom too, but that's just gonna allow me to trim off my ribbon later. So I'm lining up the bottom here. I'm gonna kind of stick down one side and the burlap's not quite staying straight, so I'm gonna straighten it up, and it's easy to see with those fibers that you can really see since they're nice and big to straighten it up a little bit. And then I'm gonna pull it taut as I stick it down to that adhesive. So now it's pretty straight, and it's held down on all the edges. So I can just cut off the excess, and I'm sure to use my scissors. I keep the, this one pair of scissors just for cutting ribbon, so it'll cut nice and clean and not leave any frayed edges. So now I've got a nice, cool, textured burlap background. And I like that that ribbon leaves kind of a finished edge to it as well. Now I'm gonna do my sentiment. And I have a piece of scrap chili pepper cardstock here, and I'm gonna be doing some white embossing. So I used my embossing powder tool there just to remove the static. I'm using the Thank Sentiment from the Big Scripty Words because these have matching dies, so this is gonna be fun to just cut out once it's embossed here. So I'm just gonna line that up, center it on that piece because that piece is cut to exactly the right width of the card I already have, so I'm not gonna have to do any more trimming on my sentiment. And then I'm just gonna add that white embossing powder. Gonna heat set that and melt that powder. So it's a nice bold white sentiment, but with that red, you're just gonna have that nice red outline to give it a little more color and pop. So I can use that matching dye, line it up with that sentiment, and hold that in place with the post-it note tape again, and I'm gonna run that through my die cut machine. And so now I have this nice intricate sentiment that, you know, you could put a sentiment on a little banner, but this kind of little, adds a little bit of extra interest to it, I think. I'm gonna use my matte multi-medium. I have a precision tip on it, and I'm just gonna make sure that I put it all over the back of that sentiment. I'm gonna get it lined up right where I want it. And then I'm gonna actually take a clear block and set it on top and hold it in place while that adhesive dries. So now I make sure that my sentiment is really stuck down well. I'm using some thin foam adhesives for the basket here. These are from Scrapbook Adhesives and they're about half the thickness as the normal ones. And then for the little apple, it's gonna kind of overlap. So what I'm gonna do is take one of the thick adhesives for the part of the apple that goes off the basket and then a thin one for the part of the apple that's gonna go on top. So I have a thick and a thin. And that way it kind of sets up a little bit from the basket as well and gives it even more dimension. 
And just to finish off, I have some red kind of burlap twine here. This is from May Arts, and I'm just tying a bow. I thought that this twine really went well with sort of the rusticness of the burlap in the background. And I'm just going to put this on the basket here. I'm going to use a little bit of that matte multi-medium again. And just put a dot of it right in the center of that top band of the basket. And then I can put my bow right on there. And this adhesive is going to dry with a matte finish so it's not, if you see it sticking out from the bow, it's going to be clear, it's going to be matte, and it's not going to be very obvious. And then I can just trim off the tails of my bow here. I like to leave my tails long and that way I can figure out how long I really want them. And there is the finished card. Thanks for watching. Have an amazing day. Bye.